stage do show de Robert Plant, o mito vivo do rock. A forte figura do ex-grupo Led Zeppelin livrou-se dos fantasmas do passado e continua sendo uma das vozes mais marcantes do rock. Robert Plant. She was a legend, alive. Well, in Brazil, I feel very powerful. Huh. Mm. And I the feel... rest of the world? Um, well, when the sky is gray, I lose my power. You know, I have huh. to have blue sky, big sun, and big communication with the people. Oh, really? You are not a night hawk? Oh, not at all? No. No. A early bird? Uh, yeah, but you know, it's, commu it's like you have to have the perfect environment to be really what people expect. Uh -huh. It's very difficult because it's very difficult to find it. But I find here in Brazil, it's been very surprising. But what do you think people expect from you? Well, if it's left to the radio and the television, I think they expect, you know, kind of some kind of heavy metal thing. Uh -huh. But if you listen to the Led Zeppelin records and to my records, you know that uh, it's much corazón. Corazón? Put us on, yeah, yeah, heart, emotion. Right. Yeah, and I think that that is, that's what I do. And I think that coming to Brazil has been really, really good for me and for the audience because they, when most groups and, and these concerts are playing very loud and very frantic, I can be really powerful, but then I can take things down into real... But you have an interesting career because you are always renewing yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you do that? You are so restless. Yeah, um, that's probably the reason why. Yeah, but I do it because from the from when I first joined Led Zeppelin when I was 19 to mm -hmm. now when I'm 45, I want to create music. I want to be responsible for making changes that which will affect music everywhere. If everybody makes the same music, life is so dull, and mm -hmm. there's too much stereotypical music available. Even grunge rock, it's it's like People get an idea and everybody hangs onto it like, same. like rats on a sinking ship hanging to the last piece of dry wood. I like to change my music. I'm very <clears throat> inspired by the people that I meet. Uh -huh. and, and what moves you? Well, I'm very passionate uh -huh. in every respect. I'm, and I'm very excitable. If I go someplace and it really moves me, then I have to write all night long in my book. Uh -huh. Just keep writing about what I feel, you know? And if I meet somebody who's really simpatico, uh -huh. nice. it's really, really good. And, uh, but I have to be gentle as well as powerful. The dynamic is so important. Uh -huh. If you make love, you don't make love like a, a wildcat mm. forever. You know? Because I like to be stimulated by um, events that are not normal. I like to put myself in positions where I, I may be, um, I have to experience new sensations. Uh -huh. And I take my friends with me or they take me. It's a great combination of people. I don't like um, regimentation. I don't like, I, I cannot hang out with people who, for instance, there are a lot of successful musicians. Uh, we are sweating, huh? It's good, yeah. Yeah, Three, let's sweat. This is a hard time. You got a camera on you? Yeah. Good. Okay. Should we? Okay. 
Well, <coughs> some, some like it hot, right? That's true. And what about you? Yeah, it seems so. <laughs> you are forced to now, because it's really hot here. But you know, I'll finish what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. When the yeah. music, I have a lot of musician friends who have a kind of an order and a plot which they follow, which gives them success. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and the success is a trap. Why? Because once you've created the success, you try many to times and many times and many imitate times. Imitate yourself. Yeah, yeah. So when I make a record, I change. Mm. Cambio, cambio, always change. Aren't you afraid of a plot suddenly? It doesn't matter. You don't care? Who cares? Uh-huh. What's there to lose? Uh, I have a lot of memories from other times. My state of mind has changed a lot from the 70s. I'm in a much better condition now. What, what has changed? Well, I have more focus. I know what I like. I don't do things I don't want to do. Uh -huh. And I take no drugs. I was affected by drugs and that was the worst thing that ever happened to me. How did you get rid of drugs? I just realized that it was ridiculous and mm. that I was becoming a monster. Mm. And that was no good. I don't want to be a monster. Why a monster? Why? Well, because excess. Mm. When you have money, you can do anything you like. <clears throat> Are you rich? I was. <laughs> it was a long time ago. But now I'm, I'm okay, you know? Mm -hmm. I have a lot of wealth in my heart. And it was a big responsibility mm. to me to, to have a responsibility to the other guys to be a part of something which I couldn't control. You know, it was a real big, big thing. And you don't know what that was like. It was really strange. Exciting, stimulating. I lost my friend. Oh, yes. Was John Bohan's That's right. death? And, you know, yeah. I mean, he and I had been, we played together since we were 15. Mm -hmm. And I just had enough of being, of doing this thing. I wanted to keep the heart. I didn't want to do something without him. Because I was so used to turning around and seeing him there. And if you keep the group going just for success, there's no point in that. There's no reason. No, I can ride horses, you know. Mm. I can swim and I can sing and I can play the guitar. And I Your can... aim is not the success. My aim is to have a, an incredible communication with my music, with the people that I'm playing to. <clears throat> and in Sao Paulo, that was absolutely tremendous. Yeah, really, I know, really. I know that. I saw it. Are you there? Yeah. Yeah. And are the 60s uh, present uh, in your imagination, in your style? Do you think you keep that uh, values? Yeah. Mm. Definitely. What from them? The kind of communication between the audience and the musicians, the, the desire to bring positivity through music rather than just clutter and anxiety. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to I wanna be able to contribute to people's happiness, not to contribute to the confusion of urban chaos. So my lyrics must be positive, and my attitude must be right, and I must project good, you know? I write often ambiguously so that it's not... I don't want people to understand everything in, instantly. So Stairway to Heaven or Cashmere or Calling to You or... <clears throat> so many songs all the way through the time. I try to make it so that you have to... What's this? What's this? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I make the voice real quiet on records. So you have to search, get inside. Something to discover. Find the music, yeah. Mm -hmm. See what this man means. Achilles' last stand on presence is one of the best things I ever wrote. Yeah. And only two people know what it means. Me and Paige. There's a sign on the wall But she wants to be sure Cause you know sometimes words have to move me 
in a tree by the brook there's a songbird that sings sometimes all of our thoughts are misbehaving and i think you can see that i think you still have demons to exercise from that period i've got to exercise them from yesterday it's the chaos you know mm. the chaos brings demons Yeah, I get rid of it. I just got rid of it singing then. You know? Ah. I'm safe doing that. Do you know your demons? Do you know them? Yeah, they're regular guests. <laughs> What face they have? Oh, they have a laughing face. Oh, yeah, they are funny. They are teasing. Mm. They tease me. So you don't believe you know, they the don't biggest, scare you. My biggest demon? Ah. Is ambition. What kind of ambition? If I go in a room full of beautiful beautiful people, I go oh, 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 oh. And then I get drunk on the whole thing because I'm so ambitious to to communicate, touch, all that sort of thing. And then I get exhausted and the demons set in. I notice that in so many countries in the world that men have got an aggressive response to other men you walk past you look at a beautiful woman mm -hmm. and the guy who's there looks and goes in brazil it's not necessary because the men are beautiful and the women are beautiful uh -huh. in most countries the men are dull and gray and exhausted with the black skies mm -hmm. and the women are generally yeah working on it but here everybody's beautiful and yeah, nobody we have one nobody man. works acts, and nobody works on it too much Uh -huh. Well, apart from plastic surgery. <laughs> But um, that's really, 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 really good for me. I like that. Once you said that love is a powerful thing, especially when it happens every week. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It happens with you so often? Infatuation is a big um, bonus for me. I just go, uh-oh, the demons are back. But you know, as an English man, you are too... English are more restrained. Yeah, but I'm only born in England. I was I lived in England until I was 20 and then I just moved and moved and moved. I married a woman from India mm. when I was 19. Mm. She's Indian, Portuguese and English. And she's a good friend still, you know? Are you married now? No. How many times did you get married? One. Just one? Why? Because when I married, the virtue of marriage and the principle of marriage was strong in my heart. When I got unmarried, I didn't think it could ever work properly for me. Led Zeppelin was young and powerful and virile and strong and focused. And the, the name Led Zeppelin should be respected forever because it was really essential and i think that that's what you got to think about that that was what it was it's like going back with your old wife you know something like that what happened was all the good intentions became processed and became commercialized in music so that <clears throat> The wonder of Jimi Hendrix or Jefferson Airplane or, or The Doors, if it existed now, it would, it would be being asked the same question about Led Zeppelin being reformed. It's bullshit. Who wants to do that? You know, when you've done something, you've done something. In those days, it was much more, um, it had more virtue. It was more realistic. The maximum emotion and intention was exorcised, and after that, finished but now if the Beatles reform it's their business mm -hmm. when the who reformed my manager there manages the who it was okay it was entertainment this is what we did it's like going to see a movie but it wasn't the who it wasn't the wild who that I saw when I was a kid you know? mm -hmm. it was this big band with backing singers and horns and global TV hardest period immediately after Led Zeppelin finished I cut my hair and I became a techno king 
And I wanted to be like uh, orchestral maneuvers in the dark. Uh-huh. I had some weird times. <laughs> that was weird. Yeah. I wanted to reject the 60s and the 70s and go somewhere new, which I did, and it was good. But when I look back now, it was unnecessary, really. I try and control everybody around me. Mm. I want to be the king of all the decisions, the king of all the taste. I'm like a taste fascist. This is how it should be. Do this to the pop. It drives people crazy. And um, I have a problem with vanity. A legend is in the air above the audience. Mm -hmm. And to conquer the audience, what do you do? No conquer, just share. No concessions? Never? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Thank you very much, Robert, for your interview.